Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of Collecting Japanese Prints. Um, welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. I want to welcome all of you who are viewing this on YouTube. Uh, the video is uh, um, first shot live on Facebook and then uploaded onto YouTube. Um, and you could connect to YouTube uh, via my website. Uh, you could go to um, Woodblock Wednesday to check out all of the previous Woodblock Wednesdays, including this one, and it will link you right to the, the videos. So welcome all of you. I'm, I'm very happy to be here with you to present um, a really wonderful group of prints um, that I think are sort of overlooked lately. Uh, the I, I pulled um, about five prints by one of Japan's most important 20th century printmakers. His name is Yozo Hamaguchi. And Hamaguchi is known as the master of mezzotint. So these prints are not woodblock prints. Uh, they are mezzotints. And we'll get into what mezzotints are in just a moment. But I just wanted to sort of touch base about Yozo Hamaguchi, about 20th century printmaking. And, and so uh, Hamaguchi is one of those artists that represents sort of the second generation of Sosaku Hanka artists. He sort of straddles uh, the line between contemporary and Sosaku Hanka. And, we, and, and I could flush that out uh, a bit more in, in a moment. But he's one of those artists that first got recognition um, in the early to mid 50s, international recognition for his artistry in printmaking. And, um, you know, for the longest time um, from basically its, its inception at in 1904, um, the Sosaku Hanga movement or even prints in general weren't um, regarded as high art in Japan or, or, or anywhere, really. Um, of course, the West appreciated prints, but uh, they weren't aware of the, the true high quality of prints that were being produced in Japan as artists producing their own work. And so Hamaguchi was one of those artists, he was a Sosaku Hanga artist, who produced his own designs and made his own prints. Um, and so um, for some reason, because I think he, he, he traveled abroad and lived a large portion of his life in Paris, he's understood in the West, particularly in Europe, as a, a very successful printmaker. Um, and also in Japan, he's celebrated for his, uh, you know, his mezzotints. But in the U.S., I, 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 I feel like, you know, a lot of collectors who, who look into 20th century printmaking sort of overlook Yamaguchi. And I, I really don't understand. Um, and I brought out some wonderful examples of his works that illustrate his career how his sort of his artistry sort of blossomed and, and sort of grew. Um, and I, I happen to have probably his, one of his most important designs as well. So you could kind of see where he excelled. Um, so without further ado, let's have a look at the table. So um, I'm gonna back up a little bit so you could see the table. And so I have, about, I have five prints um, to show you. And of course, as I always do, um, I also bring out some some books, uh, but the first print I want to uh, show is this wonderful uh, mezzotint of a floral. You know, it, this is a design produced in the early '50s, and this was actually uh, this is even earlier than '50s. This is in the late '40s, and this was done in Paris. So, just to give you a real rough sketch of his of his life. Yozo Hamakuchi was born in 1909 and he passed away about 20 years ago in 2000. And um, he, he traveled to Paris in the 30s. You know, Hamaguchi was fortunate enough to be born into a very wealthy family. Um, he, his family, it was basically the, uh, the, his ancestors started the Yamasa um, soy sauce company. And that is a company that's still in, in business today. I think it was founded, you know, in the 1600s. So clearly that family was very wealthy, very well established. And Hamaguchi could 
travel and could study to be an artist. And so he did study art. He studied sculpture. He started painting um, and then went to Paris in the 30s to further his studies in, in painting. But, um, you know, what's interesting is his printmaking um, began when um, E.E. E. Cummings, the, the poet E.E. E. Cummings, um, who was in, in Paris at the time in the 30s, um, you know, they met at, at a cafe like um, artists and intellectuals do. And, you know, they became quick friends. And uh, E.E. E. Cummings actually suggested that uh, Hamaguchi's designs that were originally sketches or paintings would work better or were better suited as prints. And so, you know, he, he looked into it and E. Cummings actually gifted him his first um, tools, um, intaglio tools, to produce prints. And so Hamaguchi works in a medium called mezzotint, which is basically uh, like a, it, it is like an etching. Uh, they're done on copper plates, but a tool is used to create marks on the surface of the, of the copper plate so that the ink adheres to the surface. So any area that is black is an area where the surface of the, of the copper has been um, scarred or marred by this tool. That it's basically a spiky tool that goes across the surface of the plate. And, you know, the artist manipulates it to create the design. Now, um, Hamaguchi is well known um, in making these wonderful prints. But, you know, on this one, I, I just want to show how small it is. Um, you can see my hand here. Um, the, the, the print itself is about, I don't know, three and a half inches by two inches. The printed part and then the piece of paper is maybe two inches wider on each side. It's a really interesting format. And, you know, at the beginning of his career, Hamaguchi was producing these very small, dainty um, designs. It was partly a function of him becoming more familiar with the uh, medium. Um, and it was also, um, you know, um, him sort of working out sort of the designs that he, he was interested in doing. And all of his designs had this really wonderful, delicate quality to them. So if, if I zoom in, you could see the lines that are on the sort of the, the flower or plant um, uh, basket or pot. Um, and then you could see the texture that's on the leaves. And, and then the flowers in the background. This is a really wonderful print. Also, the background has been worked over where you could see a very faint color of gray. And so what mezzotints were really used for, originally they were conceived um, and produced in, in the 1600s as means of reproducing um, paintings. And, um, and then so you could reproduce a painting um, in a book using mesotints, but the, the, because the technology um, came along where you could create a f offset lithography or photography very cheaply, and you could reproduce, um, yeah, you could reproduce, um, you know, uh, the, the, the paintings in books really cheaply using those means, mesotints sort of fell out of favor. However, for for Hamaguchi, he loved the idea of of creating texture and tonalities of black on his prints, and so he he this is a really early work. It's probably among the first twenty designs he produced, and so this was done about in the in the forties. And here is an another work. This is a much larger work. Um, it's a larger sheet of paper. You you know, I I'll like. I'm going to move that over and I could just back up and show you. You could see how small that print is compared to this design. And this is a work. This was done in 1957. This was done when Hamaguchi returned to Paris. Um, he was working in the 30s in Paris. His earliest designs date to about mid to early 30s up into the 40s but he returned to Japan um, in the 40s late 30s early 40s um, and he was in Japan during the war 
And this design was produced when Hamaguchi returned to Paris in the, in the early to mid 50s. So this was done in 1957. And what we could see here is a really charming design. We have like a, a coffee pot here. We have a knife. We have a, a coffee or tea saucer, um, or maybe even a bowl and a baguette so it's so this looks so french um and it could be i mean i can see this being titled sort of breakfast or something but um you know so this work is is done in these tonalities of black and imagine every aspect of this print um, has been sort of touched by the artist's tool to produce this effect this black and this deepening area here of black the shadow has been overworked countless times to create this effect. And the lighter areas of the design have, have not been touched on the surface by this, the, the printmaking tool. So you could see how he's able to achieve this wonderful sense of light. There's this luminous quality. It's almost as if the light is emanating from the objects themselves, though you could kind of see the light trailing in from the viewer's left, um, most noticeably, you know, creating a, a um, crescent moon shape um, for the tea saucer. You could kind of see the highlights of the ridges of the, of the loaf of bread here. So yeah, the, this wonderful sense of light that comes across the surface also creates a wonderful sense of um, texture and depth. Um, the, these, these items, in some cases, seem to sort of float in space. Here, they're much more grounded because you have a sense of a, a tabletop. This almost looks like the something on top or may, maybe like a placemat for a table. Um, and this is the table itself. But these, these objects do seem, in one way, rooted in the, in the plane of the, the image, but also because they have this, in, in, this sort of um, sense of light that's emanating from themselves, it, it also sort of creates this wonderful tension. And, um, but we'll see that as he develop, develops this style um, in his career. So again, this is uh, from the late 30s, early 40s, maybe mid 40s. I have to look up the design in the book. This is from 1957. And this print happens to be one of his masterpieces. It's called Rooftops of Paris. This was done in 1956. And there are two versions of this design both done in editions of 50. And I should point out, this was an artist proof, and this early work wasn't done in edition of 30. So Yama Hamaguchi's um, prints are not done in large quantities, particularly this period of time. And so this design is sort of inspired by the Parisian um, um, cityscape. And you could kind of see, almost imagine Hamaguchi um, sort of going to Sacre Coeur and looking out into the city where, you know, you could see the little houses all across. And I'm going to zoom in. You could see how wonderful this design is. Uh, inside this work, there's this wonderful sense of, of light that's emanating from each little house that has these interesting little chimneys. And, and so, this design really is a celebration of not just his experience of Paris, but his ability to produce this wonderful luminous quality, these tonalities of dark and light that live um, together. And they sort of oscillate um, throughout the design where you can see the, the background. There's this sort of mysterious um, darkness that is a wonderful backdrop to the light that emanates from these little um, these little houses. So I'm just going to zoom in so you could see closely what I mean. And I want to point out for, for collectors and connoisseurs of his work, um, Hamaguchi's prices are all over the place. So this is a very large print. It's early. 
Um, and this print sells somewhere between four and five thousand. Might see it a little bit less than that, but it, it, they, it trades about that amount retail. And this small work, because it's so early and rare, sells for close to this amount. This is about three to four thousand dollars. However, something of this nature, something so fantastic, so desirable, and considered one of his masterpieces, there's, there's two uh, titled the same thing, Rooftops of Paris. Um, the other one, which you actually see more often in the marketplace, is more of a close-up of a group of, of the houses. Um, and here, this is more of a, you know, you could see uh, a lot more. So it's, it's, it's the artist looking um, at a greater distance towards the Parisian um, cityscape. And this print sells for about twenty to 25000 So that gives you a sense of the prices. These prices are, you know, this is at, at basically at the highest level. Um, there's only a few of his designs that sell at this, this price. But uh, these other prints uh, are you know, reasonably um, priced for the collector to be able to acquire. So again, I'm going to zoom in so you could see, because this is a print that's not often shown in person, and it's not that large. So in order to really appreciate it, you got to come in and look at, at the printing. Yep, so the next work... Um, was done um, later in the 50s, and this print is two cherries. And again, um, what we have here is in the background, we have these tonalities of black, white, or light, um, which is the absence of this black, and then the color. And I, 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 I'm trying to remember if I mentioned this, but Hamaguchi is well known, and basically he's credited for um, creating colored mezzotints. So as I said, the tradition of mezzotints goes back to about the 1600s. So it's been around for a very long time. Um, and as I said, it was used more as a method to reproduce paintings than produce original artwork. Hamaguchi took this tradition, this, this very old um, and, and, and you know, well-established uh, tradition in Europe, and modernized it and used it to create um, contemporary artwork that was playful, that was also wonderfully compelling because he, he added color. And adding the color with his sense of light really animates these pieces. And again, we have these two cherries um, sort of sitting there in this space. And they sort of seem to float, uh, but they also seem to interact with each other. They're sort of angled as if one cherry is talking to the other. And the background is this wonderful sort of, uh, I mean, I, the way that I could describe it is almost lines of color and light, but it's very hard to describe. In some ways, it reminds me of almost like a Rothko painting. There's this wonderful sense of, of, of space that opens up as you look at the design. And then this work is also an example of something that was done in, in a standard small um, edition. This is done in, in, in 50. So this is 29 out of 50. And I should point out that all of these prints are executed on Western style paper. They're executed on, on, a, on a paper that you would expect um, printmaking to be be done. Um, so, you know, something like arches uh, paper is is very similar. All of them are done in this way. Um, this paper is quite thick and um, is a wonderful quality paper. You wouldn't be able to produce these designs on, on thinner paper because the plates, the metal plates, the copper plates are very, very heavy. They weigh several pounds and so impressing them into the paper would um would create rips if the paper weren't strong enough and so this paper definitely can withstand um all of the all of the pressure that comes from the printing process and i should also point out you use an uh, um, a press in making these um so you know that the, unlike woodblock prints where you the rub the design 
on the back of the paper against the block, these were done in a press. And you could see the press um, creates this line all around the image. And that is the plate line. That is actually where the plate of the metal plate ends and that impresses into the paper. And you could see that on all of his prints. Some are more pronounced than others, but you could certainly feel it. Um, and that is just, again, from the pressure of the etching press. And I want to show this last design. Um, and this is from his 22 Cherry, Cherries series. And um, that's kind of a um, one of those um, tongue twisters. Say that a, a few times fast. So uh, 22 Cherries. Um, his series that uh, showcases this design is very, very playful of uh, these cherries sort of falling and in, in floating and moving through space. And Hamaguchi is well known for using cherries and other fruit in his designs. And, and this actually goes back to E.E. E. Cummings. E.E. E. Cummings um, made a poem about um, uh, cherries. And in fact, this print which has various states of different colors belonging in, in a complete set is based on the poem that E. Cummings wrote and um, each print it represent the title of each print is actually a line from that poem so it's it's kind of interesting I'll flip through the Hamaguchi book and show you what I mean but um, you know it's interesting to consider that E. Cummings had such an influence on Hamaguchi, um, you know, suggesting first that he go into printmaking and then buying him his first um, printing tools to produce these prints. You know, it's, it's, it's fascinating to think back to Paris in the 1930s and think about all the artists that were there at the time. You know, we, of course, had Picasso that was there uh, and he was interacting with Matisse on occasion and of course the artists that were there when when I mean during the 20s or even earlier um, that were doing the paintings of the Moulin Rouge but uh, up, Paris was very active for artists up until the the war and um, writers like such as Ernest Hemingway of course poets like E. Cummings um, loved Paris for, because it was such an artist town and Yozo Hamaguchi was one of those artists that were in that um in, in, in that you know in that circle of artists thinking about what art is and, and and actually producing some really wonderful compelling um work and so again this print is a direct consequence of E. e. Cummings influence on Hamaguchi, and I think it's really neat to sort of acknowledge that. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can see how beautifully done this design is with these cherries sort of moving. Um, they, they, in if you, it depends on how you read the print. If you look up from down to up, they look like they're moving up, but then when you look at it from the top going down, they, they look like they're moving down. And there's this wonderful sense of movement and rhythm to to these designs um, in this space the background black that's rich and soft and velvet like is a wonderful backdrop to these cherries there, it's a very sensual design as most of his cherries designs are i think there might be a sexual pun here that because of the quality of how the fruit has been rendered in this really soft luscious uh, quality, but it, it really translates quite well for a print. It, it really makes the viewer, first of all, stop and look. And, and it rewards the view, viewer with so many textures and tonalities within this design that at first blush seems quite simple, but it opens up into a world unto itself. And again, the sh this sheet that um, that the the print is printed on is again, you know, quite thick. Um, it's on you know, kind of an arches paper. 
So I'm going to zoom in again on all of them so you could see the wonderful detail. Now, I'll say that um, about the mid-1950s, when um, Japanese artists were starting to get the attention of the, the world um, and, the, and the world's artist community, you could, you could see that you know, they started winning awards in Sao Paulo, and Hamaguchi re received awards at biennials um, as well. And so you know, I think um, several of his prints received awards in different um, competitions. I think he was recognized in one of the biennials. Um, and so, you know, his prints became quite sought, sought after, and he's became one of those artists that um, emerged from the second wave of the Sosakuhanga movement and became one of those artists that was a very well-established um, you know, printmaker in the 20th century. He later went on to work with uh, Vorpal. He was a publisher of his work. He was based in San Francisco. And it was Vorpal that made all of these cherry designs. This is a pre-Vorpal work, but Vorpal, you know, produced a, a lot of these, uh, these 22 cherries and other designs. And so I think Vorpal certainly made him well known in the sense that he, he produced um, a lot of his, uh, his designs. Um, and so once Vorpal came along, his editions went up in, in number as well. So we see many more Hamaguchis floating around um, for clients to purchase. And so, you know, there, there's material out there. Collectors become interested and become collectors of his work. But it's the earliest designs that are actually quite rare that if you're interested in, in collecting Hamaguchi, I recommend looking at his early work first. I think... Um, the value is quite is there for how rare the work is as well as how good it is. Um, and I'm not saying that the Vorpal designs aren't great, but a lot of these prints were produced and printed by Hamaguchi himself. I believe the, the Rooftops of Paris is an important example of that. Vorpal had his own printers, master printers um, at that, but they were nonetheless his own printers that produced these um, impressions in multiples and Hamaguchi was less involved in producing the prints and so when you're looking at these early works we're looking at work that's self-printed and self-conceived of course but self-printed in the true spirit of the Sosakuhanga movement and so I want to point out a couple books this is a really wonderful book on Hamaguchi oh I just happened to open up to the page of where the cherries are we so designs very early floral wonderful still life uh, you know, done again in Paris one of his uh, absolute masterpieces rooftops of Paris uh, this is a fantastic uh, print um, 
if you ever see it in a museum, I encourage you to come up real close and look at it because a world will open um, yeah, for you. It's, it's such a stunning print. And it's funny how powerful this design is. However, it, despite its size, you know, I want to I want to point out that, you know, that that print is uh, not even as big as the book. Um, it's and yet the the print itself is so wonderful in in how it's rendered and the power that it 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 it, it deals the viewer. I mean, it, it's so so stunning. So I can't say enough about it. And of course, the last two that we discussed. A wonderful playful design of two cherries and then his 22 cherries design so i want to thank all of you for joining me i hope you enjoyed um sort of a brief uh consideration of y yozo hamaguchi very important 20th century print artist uh and um you know if you don't know uh his work i encourage you to look him up he's, he's a wonderful artist produce some stunning designs and certainly worth uh, getting to know. So I would also want to encourage all of you to pay my website a visit, uh, collectingjapaneseprints.com. I have a wonderful array of prints available for sale as well as books. I have uh, also an archive of these Woodblock Wednesdays, as well as seminars that I've produced in the past. There's a lot of educational content that is free. Um, so feel free to you know, go up on my site and look around and also join our email list so you could uh, receive emails about the latest uh, happenings on our site. And uh, last but not least, I am in, I'm pretty much finalizing the last bit of, of, of preparations for my next website update that will go up um, in the next week or two. Um, I'm still waiting on a couple pieces to come in. And once they come in, the exhibition will go up. There's just, it's, in a, it's additions to my masterpieces from all genres. There's going to be some fantastic designs available in that exhibition, um, including um, the Hamaguchi rooftops of Paris that you um, saw in this uh, little talk. But there's some other wonderful works, uh, original works by Hiroshi Yoshida, print, prints from all genres that you will instantly recognize. So um, something to look forward to. So thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time on Woodblock Wednesday. Until then, thank you.